This is one of the last places to be discovered by the white man, to which civilization has come. Every day brings something new. You cannot plan anything for tomorrow. Every day is new. That is why the first missionaries from the very beginning called this the land of the unexpected. There were five uh, Capuchin missionaries that came in 1955 and began the mission. And virtually were among the first outsiders here in Papua New Guinea in uh, the highlands. They didn't know what to expect, but they came with a very uh, adventurous and very generous heart. And before they started putting up structures and buildings and things like that, they spent time living with the people in their villages. Uh, just to get around and move around and establish little uh, trust with the people. It took a little bit of time because uh, even when I go into the deep bush now, there are children who are afraid because, you know, they say, white man, white man, and, and start running away because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's something so different and so, you know, fearful, I suppose, to them, you know, so different. When that first contact takes place and a level of trust is established, then uh, things were able to grow from there. When the missionaries began their work here, the nuns came. People did not know how to approach them. Here in the mountains, the men have traditionally taken all the decisions in the village. It was impossible for a woman to stand up and say something or express a view. And I was a little girl and I saw these nuns coming with these big round things and with long clothes and all this. And I was really wondering who they were. Are they, are they men or are they women? Who are they? I was curious to know who they were and I used to go under the legs and look to see who they were, what they were. Are they birds or are they human beings or? One day I asked, I said, excuse me teacher, who are these people? I said, they are sisters, they are nuns. Okay, then I asked, who is the husband? Jesus. Oh, okay. So I said, Jesus will go into their house. So I normally went and sat by the door, but I never saw him going in. After a couple of months, I said, excuse me, teacher, that man never went into the house. How does he look like? I said, oh, no, he's a spirit man. Eh, spirit? I normally thought the evil spirit was the devil. So I used to feel scared of the devil. And he said, no, he's a very good man. He loves everybody. Okay. Then one day I said, teacher, can I be one of those woman? Oh yeah, he said, you can be. You can be a nun. Do everything you can to please God. That's how he loves the nuns. So that's why these ladies are here. The sisters are here. We are here, live among the people, be with them, listen to them, help them, so that the people can live happily, peacefully.
It's hard to talk about Papua as a unitary country. Traditional beliefs, the way they dress traditionally, their mentality, each group is different. We call this the one talk system. The one talk system comes down to people having the same culture, speaking the same language. There are over 700 languages here in Papua. It can be a few villages or a dozen villages. It can be a group of people, three, four thousand strong, who come from the same clan. Life is built around the community. People stick together, they are responsible for each other, but only within a particular community. If someone does something wrong, steals, rapes someone, kills someone, the community protects him. The community is willing to pay so-called compensation for what somebody did. There isn't this sense of the individual that I am responsible for my life. Within the framework of this one-talk system, you must also help others. Even if the matter does not concern you directly, you belong to a clan. And so when the time comes to pay compensation, you have to support the community. Life in the bush is very different from life in the city. We are very happy that we are where we are, because this is our home, this is our land. So house from in Osema. My house is not a typical house, built from materials bought in a store. We have to cut trees and grass and clear a space for the house in the bush. Not every man is capable of building such a house. Inside, there is a room in which the family sleep. It is a good place to live in. There is a fire in the middle of the room, on which all the meals are cooked. Men, women, children, everyone has a job to do. Daughters help in the garden and with looking after the children and care for the pig herd. While the sons help their fathers clear a space in the bush for the garden, they work together in the bush. We do not have money. We live from what we grow. If there is no garden, we die. I cannot steal from other people's gardens. I believe in God and in what is written in the Bible. Stealing is forbidden there. The first missionaries preached the good news and so we decided to change some of the practices that we had adopted from our ancestors. The good news has done a lot of good. Tribal infighting has practically ceased. Tribal wars occur to this day and everything has to tally, always. If someone dies, that someone from the other tribe has to die, before any peace talks can begin. And it doesn't matter whether you live locally or work in a plantation in another region. If you belong to this tribe, you have to be careful. My tribe, my life, is a life of fighting. Many lost their lives in the fighting, many were killed. 